Hi guys, it's John from Android Alex, and today we're going to be taking a look at all the available official cases for the Galaxy S23 Ultra. So these are all the official Samsung cases which you can buy. There's eight in total this year, and we'll just take a quick look from cheapest to most expensive, and we'll see what the case looks like on the phone, and hopefully you'll be able to make a decision as to which one you want to go for, if you want to go for one of the official ones this year. So I've put Amazon affiliate links down below in the description if you want to pick any of these up. If you enjoyed this video or if it helps you out, do be sure to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions regarding any of these cases, let me know down below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. So we're going to start off with the cheapest case, like I say, and then we'll move on from there. There are time codes in the description. You can skip to whichever case you're most interested in. So let's get on with the review now and uh, see how they all look. Okay, so first up we have the clear case here, and this retails at £25, which is about $30 or 28 euros. And this is the most basic case that they do, and it is obviously the cheapest one as well because it just offers the most basic protection. Let's get into the box and have a look at what it looks like. Okay, so here is the case itself. And you can see it's nice and shiny. It's a hard plastic cover. So it's very solid and sturdy here. You can see I can't bend this at all. Now, interestingly, it does have a cutout at the bottom here, so the bottom of the phone will not be protected, but let's pop it on and see how it looks. Okay, so it certainly clips on quite nicely. And let's just have a sort of look and feel of the phone itself in this case. It does look quite nice. You still get to show off the color of your device if you have got a special color. This is a lime color, just in case you're interested. Um, it wasn't my first choice, but uh, that's another story. But uh, yeah, let's have a look at how it looks. So first impressions, are, like I say, it feels a bit like a very solid case. We can see here the grip is very good. I can hold it almost vertically without it slipping out of my hand. So there's a lot of grip on this sort of hard plastic cover. The buttons are nice and clicky. So nothing to worry about there. And all the cutouts look to be okay. Obviously, like I say, this cutout here at the bottom is uh, an interesting design decision. That wasn't like that on the S22 Ultra, but uh, that is what it is. S Pen is still accessible without any problems. We can see here that the screen is protected by a couple of millimeters on either side. You get a designed by Samsung made in China printed on the bottom there. And at the top end here, you can see even better the amount of protection. So your phone going flat down on the table is gonna be no problem at all. Let's have a look at the back and see how the cameras are protected. Okay, so the cameras are pretty much flush with the back of the case. So I would say that they could probably be a bit more proud than that compared to the lenses themselves. So that's a bit of a shame, really. The smaller set of lenses here are protected okay, and the LED flash, however, with a bit more of depth there. But yeah, the main three sensors are not really protected, sadly. So let's just test the phone for any wobble at all when it's down on a flat surface. It's not 100% flat, but it is absolutely fine. It does. It is going to tap a bit when using it. Okay, let's just double check our wireless charging is still okay. And our reverse charging. Okay, that has worked eventually on this. It doesn't seem to like to work in that direction, however. Oh, it has found it finally. So, yeah, it's probably more reliable if you're going to uh, have your device horizontal on the back like this. So yes, that is the clear slim case. And yeah, very slim, it is lightweight. So it doesn't obviously add much bulk to your phone. Okay, so to take this one off, you do need to work from the bottom here and just push as hard as you can to get this to slide off. It doesn't feel nice when you're doing it, but I guess it's very rare that people take the cases off. Okay, and once you've peeled it off a bit, you can then start to get your thumb in there and peel the rest of the case off. Okay, so next up we have the silicon case here. Now this retails slightly more expensive at £34, which is about $41 or €38. Euros. Now this actually comes in multiple colours as well, so you can see how I've gone for the nice bright orange colour here, but you can also get it in green, navy, lavender and cream colour. Okay, so here it is out of the box, and I always like the feel of these cases. They're always nice and smooth and sort of soft to feel. It is a hard 
sort of rigid shell, but it is actually slightly flexible, as you can see here, it is giving a bit to there. Now the buttons on this one, they don't push in too far, so they're pretty sturdy. And we do get protection here at the bottom and all the way round. So let's pop the phone in, see how it looks. Now I chose the orange colour because I think that sort of stands out a bit more and uh, it's quite an interesting one. Anyway, these cases, as nice as they are to feel, they're not the grippiest of cases. So you can see here that's sliding around a bit. So it is not as grippy as the clear slim case, but it does look nicer and it does feel nicer in the hand. Now I find if you have a darker colour case that you will collect or it will be more visible, the collected sort of dust and lint from your pocket. So that is why I went for a lighter colour here. But it does look really nice. You can hear the buttons still working very nicely indeed. And if we have a look at the protection for the screen, you can see here, very similar to the clear slim case, we have a tiny bit at the top here, and we have some more protection here down at the bottom. So that's gonna give you enough protection to be able to place your phone flat down on the surface without getting the screen scratched. Now, camera-wise, a very similar situation to the clear case here. And we can see here that the cameras on the back are barely, barely protected there. So putting a phone flat on a surface, you could easily scratch your lenses, I would say, with these cases, which is a bit of a shame, really. I don't know why they don't just let this case be a tiny bit thicker. Just give it a, a millimetre or two more thickness, and I think uh, most people would be happy with that trade-off to make sure that their very expensive camera lenses are protected. You can see they're just about, maybe there's, I don't know, half a millimetre, quarter of a millimetre of uh, spare to give there, but yeah, I'm not, uh, wouldn't be too happy putting my phone on a sort of unknown surface. Obviously, at my own home, I know that most of my services are pretty free from grit and dirt, but uh, if you're out and about somewhere and you put your phone down, you could easily pick up some scratches there. Overall though, it feels really nice and it looks really nice in this case. And we can see here all the cutouts are absolutely fine. We can easily access our S Pen with no problem. Ambient mic is okay as well and nicely lined up. So let's just have a quick test here to see if there's any wobble at all. And there's absolutely none here on the silicon case, unlike on the clear case. So yeah, absolutely flat and perfect really. Apart from the fact obviously you've got the issue that your lenses may get uh, scratched. So let's just check the wireless charging. Still working fine. And reverse wireless charging. It's still working absolutely fine. So that is the silicon case. And yeah, I really do like these and I wish I could use them as a daily case, but I can't risk my camera lenses personally, just in case I drop it on floor and it uh, hits on one of these. So yeah, a nice looking case, but only to be taken out with extreme caution, if like me, if you're worried about uh, dropping a phone and damaging your lenses at least. Other than that though, it's a really nice feeling and looking case. Not the grippiest though, but uh, that's what you get with silicon. So again, to take this one off, we just push it off from the bottom. And that just comes off like that. Okay, so next up is a new one to the lineup, and this is the frame case. So this is quite an interesting one. You actually get two different frames that you can stick inside the sort of main frame of the case, so to speak. Okay, so here is the case and the frame that is available to be put inside, separated with a bit of paper or plastic here. Okay, so we can see here, you get two options basically. So you can have a clear case, and I don't know why you would bother to be honest, because this is basically making it the same as your sort of clear slim case, aside from the fact it uh, comes in two parts and does actually cover the bottom. But yeah, I don't think anyone's gonna be buying this for this particular frame itself. You never know, I guess. We can certainly try it out and see how it looks. So it's slightly fiddly, but uh, let's try Popping that in there. That is a solid snap there to get that on. It's quite, um, yeah, quite tight, I'd say. So aside from the blemish from the sticker, which could be rubbed off, it is just a bit of sticky, a sticky blemish. This is the frame case, and it's a strange feeling actually, because you, you get, um, it sort of indents in the middle here where the frame comes together with the rest of the case. So you've got a sort of, indentation and I'm not sure whether I like that particularly. Personally it feels a bit funny having a having your sort of fingers go in 
to the back of your phone like that, even though it's only a small amount, maybe it's just sort of muscle memory. I'm not really used to that sort of feeling. It feels almost like you're, uh, I don't know, it just feels like you might drop the phone easier with it like this. I'm not sure why, I can't really explain the feeling. But yeah, I'm not sure I'd like the feeling of this indentation to the back of the phone once you have this case on. However, let's just check all the protection and see how it looks. So we've got the usual protection at the front here for the top and bottom. So face down, that's absolutely fine. Buttons feel okay. I wouldn't say they feel very clicky, they feel a bit spongy. And I think that's because of this being quite sort of loose, if you can see that. So yeah, that makes these, although they're clicking okay, you can noticeably feel the difference between this and the other case. So yeah, the fact that this case does expand like this, I don't really like that personally. It's a shame because the top and bottom of the case are pretty solid. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get this back out. It went in so tight, but we'll try. But yeah, other than that, that is the clear back version of this case. And again, I don't know why you'd bother having this if you've just bought it so that you can actually use this cover. But nevertheless, we will double check the wireless charging. And obviously that's still working along with the reverse wireless charging, which is also still working. Camera protection wise, initially I thought it was quite bad because of the fact these are all flush. There's still about the same amount of protection as we saw in the previous cases, but it's just this sort of indentation in the back there, as you can see. So the fact the case is raised up does mean there's a bit more protection there potentially. I can't say for sure how much that is, but it is slightly raised above the rest of the camera lenses. Let's try getting this out of the case now. And I think this is gonna be really tight. Okay, let's work from the top. The top is a lot easier to get off actually than the bottom. So yeah, that is extremely tight. So let's take out that clear one. Almost like uh, cardboard this. I guess it probably is actually, with a bit of plastic on top. This actual case or frame. On the inside though, it does have a nice sort of velvety suede effect. And you can actually get a black version of this as well. This is the white one, but it does come in black as well. So let's pop the phone in and see how it looks. Okay, that was a lot easier to get in than the plastic one. I'm not sure why. I guess that's because this can be a bit more, well, this is a bit more flexible maybe than the hard plastic. But anyway, this is the frame case, which I imagine is what most people would be buying it for, for this white or black, like I say, frame for the back, which lets you store your card in. Okay, so if we pop a card in, you can only fit one card in here. Obviously initially it's a bit tight, but there we are. That's going nicely, nice and snug in there. And you can easily get that out by just using your thumb. So let's just double check the case and we have got our protection there at the bottom and the top of the phone. We've got access to all our ports okay. We can get our S Pen in and out. And our ambient mic is okay. Again, because of the fact this is uh, slightly loose around the sides, the buttons are squidgy, which uh, isn't, to my personal preference, a nice sort of feeling, but uh, they still work okay, but when you've used one of the more clickier ones, you are sort of spoilt for that sort of feeling. But uh, on the back of the case, we can see here that our protection is pretty good, actually. If we have a look at the cameras, at least, we can see that they have a lot more protection than some of the previous cases we've looked at. Not a huge amount, but there is protection there, which is something now, obviously, also, you've got the fact that this card holder lifts the phone off the table somewhat. So let's just double check, actually, to see how or see if there's any wobble. OK, so there is some wobble there at the top if you're going to be using this flat down on the surface. Just in the top, obviously, because of the fact that we've got this sort of card holder bit here on the bottom. We need to double check our clear plastic case, actually, to make sure that there was no wobble on there. There shouldn't have been any wobble. But anyway, let's check for wireless charging, see if that's still working. Okay, nothing there with the card in, so let's just try it without the card. Okay, no wireless charging, it's certainly not working, so let's try reverse wireless charging. I imagine we'll be in the same situation here. Yeah, so that is a bit of a shame, really. The lack of wireless and reverse wireless charging. I imagine it's because they don't want people's credit or debit cards to start melting in the back of the phone 
when uh, they start charging them up with a 15 watt wireless charger. So yeah, just bear that in mind. No wireless charging at all for this one. I do think it looks quite nice though, however, certainly with this white uh, frame in. The black frame, I imagine, will also look quite uh, sleek as well. The only problems though, like I say, are the fact that this is not really gonna be doing huge amount of good. Other than that, the grip is not very good at all either because of the fact this is a sort of faux leather effect here on the back. Other than that, it's a reasonably nice looking case. It is a bit different, so it's good that they're trying new things, but uh, personally, I wouldn't bother with this one unless you don't care about wireless charging, of course, and you want to always carry a card around with you without having to have a flip case, then this may be one that you want to look into. So to get this one off, again, we're going to go from the top here, because that makes it nice and easy. Before I forget, I'm just going to double check for any wobble on the clear one. So yeah, absolutely no wobble at all with the clear sort of backing in this case. Okay, so here is the silicon grip case, and this comes in at £44, which is about $53 or about €50. Euros. Now this comes in black, as you can see here, and there's also a white version with a sort of orange accent to the, uh, the grip itself. So let's get into it and have a look. Okay, so here it is out of the box, and it's quite a nice looking case. It actually feels basically the same as the silicon case, but we do have this added benefit of this sort of grip section here for you to put your hand in. Just stretch out quite far actually, as you can see. So if you've got big hands, you shouldn't need to worry. Don't know how far that will go, but obviously we don't want to break the actual elastic here. But yeah, that's quite a nice added feature to those who want to be able to hold their phone a lot easier, just popping your, phone, your hand in the back here and uh, gripping it. It's quite a strong elastic, but we'll put the phone into it and have a proper feel of it all. So it does look really nice in this case, it, obviously similar to the silicon case from the front at least, and the back we now have this handle or this grip as they call it to be able to hold your phone with. So it's quite a nice sort of interesting look. We've got the sort of Samsung S on the back here and we've got Samsung also sort of printed down here in the bottom corner as well. Now protection wise, we can see the screen is very nicely protected here from both the bottom and the top. So no problem putting your phone face down. Everything looks to be lined up correctly. S Pen is coming in and out, no problem at all. Buttons are nice and clicky. And our ambient mic is obviously not covered up either. Now protection for the cameras is not bad at all actually. This is probably one of the first cases where I wouldn't be worried about putting this down flat on the table because of that protection there for the camera lenses. But obviously we've even got this grip thing here, which will be uh, interesting to see how it goes in the sort of wobble test. But yeah, overall quite a nice looking case. And you're basically paying an extra 10 pounds to have this grip on the back here. So if you are a person who would find that useful, I don't think I would personally, because I tend to type two-handed, so I wouldn't really be able to type if I'm holding the phone in the grip like this. I'd have to move my hand all the way down to the bottom here. Maybe just have it with three fingers. But no, I don't, I don't think someone who types with their thumbs at least would uh, find this one uh, very useful. But uh, obviously everyone uses their phone slightly differently. So if you're one of those who does like to have a sort of grip or handle on the phone, then maybe this is a good one for you. Wobble wise, as you can see here, we're not looking too good on the table. It's a bit of a sad, well, it looks a bit sad, doesn't it? When it's sort of lying on its side there. But uh, yeah, if you're gonna be typing on this, it is going to be wobbling around the place because of the fact, obviously, the grip here is sticking out. So I've just checked the wireless charging out and that is still working somehow. Let's just double check. It is obviously lifted off the wireless charger somewhat here, you can see. So it wouldn't be the most efficient wireless charging in the world, but it does work, which is something. So let's try our reverse wireless charging as well. And that's definitely not going to work. Now you could obviously put your phone in underneath here, but or whatever it is you're charging. It's going to start to, yeah, it's, I wouldn't say it's, it doesn't work, but it's not exactly ideal for reverse wireless charging. So again, this is pretty stretchy, so I don't know how long this would last, but it does come out quite a way here. So if you do have bigger hands, you shouldn't have any problems with this. I guess you could even just carry it like this if you uh, so wanted to, but it is a bit wobbly like that. Let's just see if we can take the actual strap off itself. I believe it should come out of the case. Let's just get the case off first if we can. 
It's quite tight onto the top here. Okay, so what we should be able to do is unhook this, unhook that, and take off this grip completely. This is probably where the sort of third party grips and things are gonna come into play. They're third party accessories as they call them. I haven't been able to find any available for any of the cases at all at the moment, but I guess in the future you'll be able to buy, um, I don't know, a, a Simpsons grip to put in your uh, silicon case. Now, interestingly, I've just made a discovery that this could actually be a bit tighter or a bit looser because obviously you've got two hooks here, so you could make it a bit longer if you needed to. So let's make it as long as possible. Okay, so that's pretty big. I'm not quite sure why you would need it that big, but it is possible, which is good. It's good to have the option at least. So yeah, that is the silicon grip case. 44 pounds, $53, about 50 euros, coming in black and in white. Okay, so next up we have the Smart View wallet case. And this comes in also at 44 pounds, which is about $53 or about 50 euros. And this is the standard Samsung, let's give you a little window in the front of your case type foldable case. So let's get it open and have a look at what it's like this year. Okay, so here is the case, and I can't remember going for this colour, but obviously I did. This is a sort of greeny coloured case. Not a very nice colour in my opinion, actually. Now I've come to see it in, uh, in real life, but still it is the sort of dark green colour, army green maybe you could call it. But this does also come in black, lavender and cream as well. Pop in the phone and we can have a look what it's like inside. So they still haven't added any sort of magnet to this case, which is a bit of a shame because it does mean it flops open like this. Pop it in properly. I still think there could be something somewhere, even if it's along the bottom or the top of the case where they just have a little magnet just to try and keep that closed so it doesn't flap open uh, when you're holding it. But I imagine obviously most of the time you're holding it like this anyway, but still it's just one of those annoyances, I guess. But overall, the case itself Looks pretty good, very sort of neat and tidy, very sort of smooth design. No massive uh, logos or anything on it. We just got the Samsung one on the bottom there. Nothing on the sides either, just the speaker earpiece here at the top. So you can still hear when you don't have the case open and you're on a call. So we can try that out shortly, to see what it looks like. But yeah, you can obviously customize what the uh, cover display looks like here. So we have a look inside. We can go to the cover screen settings and we can obviously edit our clock or whatever we want to look like something more fancy if we wish. You can even customize these. It's a bit more customization maybe this year. Let's have a panda. And you can also change the background image to something more customizable if you want. Obviously we can't for this clock one, but let's uh, have a look at that one. So there we are, we have a nice little panda as our clock now. Right, so we can see here when receiving a call, we get this on the display and we can either answer or reject. Now, once a call is in place, the screen will go off. But then we can just hang up by sliding across to the left. You'll also see the notification here at the top left. I don't really like this personally. I'd rather have either an SMS icon or an email icon on the cover display. It's much more useful. As far as I know though, you can't have that. So yeah, it doesn't matter what clock style you choose, you don't get an option to have any uh, sort of useful always on display information apart from a clock maybe. Now the buttons are extremely stiff. I don't really like these buttons. You can't really see or hear, I guess, because there's no clicking at all here. I will just double check they're lined up correctly, which they are. So yeah, it's very, very stiff. The phone is in properly. But yeah, pressing these is now an effort, whereas before, in our previous cases, it wasn't. So yeah, not very impressed with these buttons here. Very, very hard to actually uh, press down. So yeah, bear that in mind for this case, definitely. The buttons on it are pretty, uh, pretty stiff indeed. Now, protection of the camera is reasonable. Not as good as it could be, but I wouldn't be worried about putting my phone flat down. We'll just try out the wireless charging. That is working okay. And um, we'll just try the reverse wireless charging. 
There we are. It's a bit of a shout out to my S8 here. I still think this is one of the best phones that Samsung made design wise, not necessarily the fingerprint on the back, but overall really nice phone. Anyway, that is the SmartView wallet case. And if you are someone who wants to have a little window of opportunity to see what your phone is saying time wise, or that you need to be able to answer a call like that, then this could be for you if you wanna have that extra display protection and you're worried about the fact that your your phone may get scratched if you put it face down, then I guess this is for those sorts of people. You can also fit a card or two into here. You can easily get two into this. It's pretty, uh, pretty loose, not loose that they'll fall out. In fact, when you slide it in, it's going down into this uh, indent here. So you can see it's slightly indented here inside the case, which actually makes it feel nice and solid in there. That's definitely not gonna slip out at all, no matter what you try. So yeah, a couple of cards in there and you should still be able to use them for wireless transactions if you need to. Now, wobble wise, absolutely none at all for this phone. Everything else is still accessible without any problems. But yeah, just to note, those buttons are very, very stiff indeed. So let's pop this back out now. Again, just move it from the top and sliding it out. Okay, so here we are. This is where things get slightly more interesting this year as they've come out with this new sort of gadget case as they're calling it. So these gadget cases are things where you can attach additional gadgets to the back of your phone. Think of it as Samsung's sort of answer to Apple's mag connector type things that they've got. But I think these are probably gonna be better because they don't use a magnet to attach. Therefore, in theory, they should be a lot stronger and you don't need to worry about things falling off your phone. So let's get it open and have a look. There's only one color for this and that is the transparent color that you see here, which I think is a bit of a shame. I think they could have gone for maybe black as well, but uh, maybe next year. Okay, so we get the instructions with the case here, which I'll just quickly show you if you want to pause and have a look at those. And our gadget, quote unquote, is inside here. So this is the sort of stand gadget itself for the case. As you can see here, it's got a sort of nice suede effect on the back and the gadget sort of mechanism here, which will lock on to our case. So by default, the case will come like this with this sort of circular piece on here. Now, if you like spinning things around, I guess you could leave that on. But I guess the main reason you bought this is for these additional gadgets. And again, I think they're calling them accessories. I cannot find any anywhere to get in addition to this currently, but on the website, you can see that there will be other ones coming out from various different uh, providers and different brands and designs. So I guess in theory, in the future, there'll be lots of different things that you can snap on to your case and carry around with you to show off how cool you are. But anyway, we're gonna pop this on and it's quite easy to do. You can do it either way. You can obviously do it this way and it does sort of show you a little icon here as to which way you should align your gadget that you're putting on. I'm gonna put it on from this side first to show you. And you can see it sort of pops on a bit, feels a bit springy as if there's a spring inside. But basically when you turn it across to the left, it clicks into place and that is no longer going anywhere. So to take it off, it says here to slide and unlock. Now you have to open this up to take this off and then you can just slide it and unlock it that way. It will pop off. So let's just pop, pop it on from the other side so you can see what's happening here. So we're just lining up the bit of the case here. It's like a jigsaw puzzle from the back, as you can see, it just slots into there and it just turns and clicks and locks into place. And then once we press up here on the back of the case, we can then slide it back around and back out. So this is basically the same as our clear slim case, which retailed at 25 pounds, but this one comes in at 49 pounds, which is $59 or 55 euros. So it's a lot more expensive to have this additional feature on top, but is it worth it? Let's find out by popping our phone in. It's an extremely tight fit, but uh, this is our phone in the case. And yeah, it looks nice. I do like the clear style cases. But anyway, this has got this gadget or accessory on the back here, which allows you to use it as a stand. So we'll come to that very shortly. Let's just double check the protection. This should be exactly the same as our clear slim case, and it is camera protection, pretty much non-existent, sadly, still. So I wouldn't really fancy putting this down on the table, but although we'll see what it's like. Buttons feel really nice, nice and clicky. 
And again, we don't have this protection here on the bottom, which is a shame. We can get to our S Pen, no problem. And our ambient mic is absolutely fine. So yeah, feels really nice, feels nice and grippy. Even with this thing in the back here, you probably sort of hold it like this, I guess, if when you're not using that as a grip potentially. So you can obviously put your fingers here. And I'd prefer this to the silicon grip case because I don't want to have my whole hand through it. Maybe a couple of fingers like this is fine to allow you to just hold it with a bit more sturdiness. But yeah, let's have a look at what the stand itself is like. So it's pretty good. You can have multiple angles here. And it feels pretty sturdy. This is probably the most angles from any sort of stand case because of the fact this is quite a nice stiff design. Now be interesting to see. Yeah, sadly, we do not have any ability to have a portrait standing phone, which is a bit of a shame really because I have my phone standing up portrait for most of the day. So this would not be ideal for me with this gadget on at least, or this accessory. But if they do come up with a accessory which allows you to have a portrait standing mode, then I'd certainly be buying that if I had this case. Otherwise, as you can see, it's just gonna fall over. When it's flat on its back, it's uh, not looking too good either. If you wanna try and type on here, good luck to you, because that's not gonna happen. Obviously, you can easily remove this without any problems. So with that removed, and with this back on, let's have a look. Still pretty bad. I'd say that's unusable on a flat surface. So as good as it is that you do have these different gadgets, it is gonna affect your ability to have this flat down on a table. Now I know not every person does have that flat on a table, so that's absolutely fine, but uh, I just wanted to point that out for those who may be interested. So yeah, this thing here, pulling pretty hard on here. You can see the case flexing as I pull. That's not gonna come off, so these are pretty, pretty secure indeed. I'm pretty sure that the wireless charging is not gonna work on this. If it did, it would be an absolute miracle. So there's no wireless charging with this on. So let's pop this off. Okay, wireless charging has been restored. Let's pop this on as well, just to protect that bit. So you can wirelessly charge with that stand off. Let's try our reverse wireless charging. Okay, so it gets there eventually, but I wouldn't say that's a reliable wireless charge. Let's just see. You can see here the gap between them, it's, it's too far. I wouldn't bother doing that. If you've got a small accessory like your earbuds or something, that should be okay. It would obviously fit through, but obviously because of this bit here, you're gonna struggle with the charging of the phone, for example. But yeah, I like the fact they have sort of innovated slightly with this case for a change. It's not just a boring uh, case that we saw last year. It is something new at least. But yeah, it does add a bit of bulk to your phone, obviously. But if you are someone who likes to have something to grip onto when holding the phone, then uh, yeah, this does do the job. Now to take this off, we will go from the bottom and cross our fingers because this is very tight. The trick is to get it started and then it becomes a bit easier after that. But yeah, I don't like how tight this is. It is very, very tight, but it is coming off slowly. I didn't like the sound of that, but nothing has snapped or broken. So my advice is if you do get one of these cases, just leave it on and just change the uh, accessory as and when you need to. Right, so next up is the leather case, and this comes in a few different colors. We've got camel here, but it also comes in green and black. Now this retails at 54 pounds, and that's 65 dollars or 61 euros. So it's one of the most expensive ones today, but it is genuine leather. Okay, so here is the leather case, and for 54 pounds, I guess what you're getting here is some sort of a genuine leather, and the fact that it's been put into a nice fancy case for you. It does smell like leather, so I'm pretty sure Samsung wouldn't lie to you about the fact it is genuine leather. And that obviously will deter some people from buying this case if they're not into that sort of thing. But um, this is what it looks like anyway. Like I say, three colors, and it's just your typical leather case from Samsung. So let's pop our phone in, see how it looks. It, these do always feel very nice on the phone, very sort of snug and uh, not snug in a, in a tight way, but hard to describe it way basically. But yeah, it feels nice and grippy on the case itself. We have our usual screen protection here from the bottom and top sides, and our usual lack of camera protection here from the Samsung cases 
on the back. So again, although there's a tiny bit protruding there, I wouldn't be very happy particularly pop my phone down in an unknown location where there could be some dirt or grit on the table. So yeah, just bear that in mind. The grip on these also is pretty bad. It's just a smooth leather, so it does obviously slide out your hand a bit. I guess over the years, leather will wear a bit and it will get a bit, uh, bit more rough and uh, grippy. But other than that, yeah, this is it. It looks as it would do with the previous leather cases from Samsung. Buttons really nice and clicky. See here, absolutely no wobble at all from this. So it's nice and solid on the table. We've got our wireless charging working and our reverse charging also working fine. So that's pretty much all there is to this case. It's very simple. It is a leather case, but obviously you're paying the premium for the fact it's made from leather. Still get to our S Pen without any issues. And I can't see any defects on this leather case. In the past, I've had a couple of cases with a funny few marks. But uh, yeah, this looks pretty good quality. You've got a sort of a slight accent to the volume rocker and the power buttons here. So yeah, it is a nice sort of stylish case. I've never used one as my permanent case uh, before, but uh, it is nice if you are one of those more stylish people out there. Maybe you are a leather case person. But uh, yeah, that is the Samsung official leather case. So you have got one more case to move on to now, which is the rugged gadget case. Okay, so this is the rugged gadget case, and this is a bit of a beast. You can see how thick it is here from the box. I had to import this from Germany, so there's no stock in the UK, so that's why this video is a few days later than I would have liked. So let's get in and have a look. Now this comes in just black or white. I haven't seen the white version of this, but there is a white one apparently that you can get. And this retails at £54, $65 or €61. Euros. Okay, so that is definitely feeling rugged. Okay, so we have the instructions here, which you can pause and have a look at if you wish. We've also got another set here, which you can have a quick look at. So yeah, this is very bulky. It's um, quite cool though. You can see here our card slot for the back of the case, which can come off by pressing and holding on the button here at the bottom. You can see here, there's a button to press and we can press and hold that and rotate and take this off. So yeah, that's a really very solid bulky card reader, uh, card holder, sorry, here. So you can see our card fits in nicely there. I think they've missed a bit of a trick here, unless I've completely lost the plot here. It's a shame you can't fit multiple cards inside here, because there's certainly enough width there and depth to fit more than one card in. So I'm not sure they've sort of missed a bit of a trick there, I'd say. You always want to be able to open this up as a compartment to be able to get to other cards. But anyway, we'll pop it back on the case for the time being. This is how it comes. So again, you have it on at this angle and you just rotate it around. Now you'll notice here that this also comes with another accessory, which is a phone stand, which is basically the version of the clear case, which we'll have a look at very shortly. Let's just have a quick look over the case itself though. So this is it. It, is, it feels quite hefty. There's quite a weight to it but obviously you're paying for the fact it's a rugged case. You've got an interesting sort of web design inside here or honeycomb design. I guess that's to give it more sturdiness. But yeah, this is pretty solid. And the sides of the phone are also solid. There's no sort of bend or anything too bad in here. Top and bottom of the phone are very well protected as well, as you can see. So let's pop our phone in and see how it looks. Okay, so there we are, that is the rugged case and it is definitely rugged. I'd say that's probably the best protection I've seen on a case for a very long time. This reminds me of one of the sort of tough armor cases from Spigen, but uh, yeah, this is very thick, very rugged. You can see the total width of that after you've got the uh, card holder on there. It's quite, quite wide indeed, but it doesn't actually feel that uncomfortable to use. I think the fact you've got this additional bulk here where I sort of lean my little finger, it actually doesn't feel too bulky when you actually hold it in your hand. So we can see the screen protection here and this actually goes all the way around, which is the first I've seen this on a case for the S20 Ultra range because normally they leave a bit on the side to make it easier for you to get to the side of the screen. But actually the S23 this year 
isn't that curved. It's a bit less curved than last year. Hopefully they're just going to go back to a flat display because I think overall flat displays are just a bit uh, better and you've got less to worry about in terms of cases as well because you can protect all the way around them like you see here. So yeah, this is fully protected from all angles. You do have this little hook bit on the end, which I guess you can hook onto something if you need to. Got an interesting design at the bottom here. We can still access everything, obviously. The mics, USB and the speaker, and we can get our S Pen out. It's not as easy as the other cases, but it does have a bit more room in there to be protected. So I would trade that for ease of access. It's still, I mean, you can see it's easy to get out still. It's just not as easy because you've got to put your finger in a bit more. Shouldn't be any problem charging up with this either. Even if it's quite a thick case, you can get a pretty thick uh, USB-C connector in there without any problems. Now, wireless charging is obviously not going to work through this back here. So we can try it with the other gadget or accessory on in a moment. Let's just double check our camera protection. And for some reason, even though this is a rugged gadget case, they didn't think to protect the camera lenses which is a bit of a shame. So although there's a slight rim above here, the cameras are still flush to the back of the case, which is a shame in my opinion. If you're going rugged, you should really just go all out and go properly rugged. But uh, let's see how it looks on the table. So interestingly, the case is nice and stable. So you can press up until about uh, two thirds, no, three quarters, I'd say, of the way up the phone, you can press without it wobbling at all. So that's surprising with obviously this big block of uh, plastic on the back here. So let's take this off and pop the stand on. So we just rotate this round, pop it off. And here we go with the stand as well. Put that on there and let it click into place. And here we've got a very, as you can see, it's very sort of rugged looking. It feels cold like metal. So I'm not sure what sort of metal it's made out of, but uh, yeah, it's certainly a rugged feel to it. And here that allows us to have our phone at very many different angles, even up completely upright here, which is quite nice. Now it doesn't quite let you stand it up portrait mode, which is a shame. You could probably just about get away with it, but I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that particularly. So I think that's the only thing missing from this rugged case, similar to the little sister, the gadget case. There's just no ability to have it portrait, which is something I use quite a lot. Similar to the clear gadget case, we just slide this up, spin it around, and that will pop off like that. So we can try the wireless charging with the accessories off. And it does actually work okay with the accessories disabled or not disabled, taken off. Let's just try reverse wireless charging as well. This could be more problematic because of the fact you've got this sort of section here, which is protruding somewhat. You may find you're okay with a very small earbud case for wireless charging. But yeah, reverse wireless charging is not looking too good with this case, but you're paying for the fact it's a rugged case to protect your investment. Now I haven't gone over the buttons yet. They're not too bad. They're not as clicky as I like, but obviously the fact you've got this extra sort of plastic case behind it is obviously why it's not as clicky as it could be. But uh, that is what you get out of the box. And obviously when they release the additional accessories, if they do, the third parties as well, then you'll be able to have different types of accessory attached to your gadget case. Again, you can hold with three, depending on how big your hand is, two, three or four fingers. And of course, this is not going to be going anywhere. This is solid and stuck in place. There's nothing I can do to get that off without obviously pressing up on this latch and sliding it across. So with the stand on, there's no wobble on this one at all, towards the bottom. Again, towards the sort of top two thirds of the phone, top third of the phone, you are gonna get some wobble there. There's not gonna be any wireless charging from this, it's just way too far away. Same with wireless reverse charging, that's not gonna work because of the fact this is sticking out. So yeah, you would need to remove your gadget or accessory here, which is very simple and quick to do if you want to be able to wirelessly charge your phone. And obviously with the protection this one offers, this is the ultimate out of all of the official cases, at least protection for your S23 Ultra. Okay, so we'll just go through a quick roundup of all the cases, just in case you want a quick overview of what we've gone through. So we started off with the clear slim case here. This is 25 pounds. This is a hard shell, very basic case, not very flexible at all. 
and no protection here at the bottom. A bit expensive for what you get, which is basically just a clear shell to put over your phone. You could probably get a cheaper, better one from another brand. But uh, yeah, that is the official clear case there. We then moved on to the silicon case, and I do like these, like I say, the feel of these is really nice. This does come in multiple colors as well. Got orange here, there's cream, lavender, navy, and green as well. Now these are nice overall sort of general cases with no camera protection particularly to write home about, but uh, the nice sort of feel to the case itself. So next up was the frame case, and this gives you the option to have two different uh, styles of case. You can either have a completely clear back to your case if you wish, which is basically the same as the clear case here, or what you probably bought it for was this insert here, which allows you to pop that in the back and have a credit card or something in the back of your phone here. So that is the frame case. That's £44, $53 or 50 euros. And it's a nice idea. I'm not sure if it's been implemented very well. Don't forget that the sides of this case do come out a bit like this. So I wouldn't trust it personally for my phone. That is the frame case. And again, you can get a black version of this as well. This is the white one. So there is a black version also available. Next up was the silicon grip case. And this comes in at £44, $53 or 50 euros. And this is basically the same as this, but it has this grip on the back. So if you are someone who likes to hold their phone or have extra support for their phone, this is okay for you to go for because it gives you that option. You can also extend the grip by just loosening this and clicking that down to make it slightly wider or longer at least. So if you do have a requirement to do so, you can adjust the length of this sort of grip itself. So yeah, overall, the same as the silicon case, but with this added grip, which is removable completely if you want to. And that comes in black and also comes in white as well. All right, next up was the Smart View wallet case here. And this is £44, $53 or 50 euros RRP. And this is your typical Samsung cover view case where you've got a little display of your front screen here, which can tell you the time, notifications, you can answer and decline calls from here and obviously speak to people with the case closed. So this is offering full protection for your screen, obviously, but it doesn't have any magnet to keep it shut. So it will flap open if you're not careful. You can put a couple of cards in here, which is useful. So if you just want all around protection for your phone when it's in your pocket or in your bag or something, then this is probably a reason one to go for. The only problem I had with my one at least that these buttons are extremely stiff. So just bear that in mind, the one I've got here, these are almost impossible to press. No good feedback at all, so that's a bit of a shame. This does come in green, which I have here, which I don't really like the color of in person. It doesn't look very nice in my opinion. It does also come in black, lavender and cream, however, so I'll probably go for a black or cream one next time. Right, next up is the clear gadget case, and this is basically the exact same case as the clear case here, as you can see, exactly the same, but you're paying an extra 10 pounds for this accessory on the back here. So this comes with this stand accessory. As you can see, you can tilt it and have it in multiple different angles. Obviously, whichever way up your phone is, you can see you could have multiple different viewing angles. You can use it as a grip to actually hold on to your phone if you wanted to. And these are very, very strong, easy to remove by just sliding this up and just twisting off, that comes off like that. So you can, or you will be able to get additional accessories for these cases at some point. I couldn't find any available to buy at the time of making this video, but I will update the description if I do find any. This only comes in transparent, as its name suggests, the clear gadget case. But yeah, it's an interesting idea. It's a shame that you can't have the phone stood up in portrait mode with this stand on, but maybe they'll release a accessory that allows that in the future. Next up we had a look at the leather case and this is just your typical leather case from Samsung. It smells nice and it's made from real leather. A bit bendy here but it is obviously leather on the outside which means you protect it from scratches and knocks pretty well. Sadly the camera protection isn't the best. Uh, well it's non-existent basically so I wouldn't really like to have this for my phone because I like to be able to put my phone flat on a table without worrying about the camera lenses getting scratched. Really nice feedback on the buttons. Protected all around apart from lack of protection on the camera lenses. So that is the leather case that comes in green camel, which we have here and also in black. So that's 54 pounds, $65 or 61 euros for the privilege. So next up was this beast, the rugged gadget case. And this is basically the sort of rugged version of the clear gadget case. So you can see here comes in black 
or it comes in white. And this is basically the best protection you can get out of all these cases for the S23 Ultra. It comes with accessories which can be removed. This is a card holder which can only hold one, possibly two cards if you squeeze them in there. It also comes with a stand similar to the gadget case here which we can pop on. And then you have either a stand for your phone, either way up. It doesn't work in portrait mode, but you can use it as a sort of holding grip as well, if you so wish. Everything else was fine on this case, and it's the first case I've seen that actually protects the side of the screen as well as the top and bottom. It's good to see something different from Samsung. This is 54 pounds, which is 65 US dollars or 61 euros. So it is expensive, but I guess you're putting the price on the fact that hopefully, if you did drop your phone with this case on, then you wouldn't even know because it's so rugged and it's very sort of well protected. Certainly in the corners, there's no way that you're gonna damage your phone with this case on. That being said, the cameras were still flush to this top bit here, but obviously you do have this protruding out, so you should be okay if it dropped. It would probably hit this top section first before it hit anything else. But uh, yeah, it would have been nicer to see a bit more protection there for the camera lenses, in my opinion. Okay, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions regarding any of these cases, do let me know down below in the comments and I'll do my best to answer where possible. Let me know which is your favourite case down below. I do kind of miss the days of the LED case that Samsung used to make. The best one I think they made was on the S10, but they just completely stopped doing those nowadays, which is a bit of a shame. It added something a bit more fun to your phone, but uh, it is what it is. These are all the current official cases. So yeah, let me know what your thoughts are. There's affiliate links down below if you wanna pick any of them up. And if this video helped you, don't forget to like and subscribe. That really helps out. Don't forget to check out my other S23 videos, which I've linked down below and in the top right corner, we've got a benchmark test, got a speed test and a battery drain test. So it's all useful information if you're thinking about getting an S23. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.